फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर अम्बेडकर एंड यू नो दैट वी ऑल लर्न राइट इन अवर फर्स्ट क्लिनिकल मेडिकल टर्म हिस्ट्री टेकिंग बट हिस्ट्री टेकिंग इज जस्ट नॉट कलेक्टिंग सम इंफॉर्मेशन एंड डॉक्यूमेंटिंग इट बट मच बी ऑन एंड देर फर इन दिस एपिसोड आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट वॉट इज द पर्पज ऑफ हिस्ट्री टेकिंग एंड हाउ डू वी अचीव दैट पर्पज फ्रेंड्स आई एम कन्विंस ओवर इयर्स दैट एटी टू एटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ द टाइम्स अ गुड डिटेल्ड हिस्ट्री एंड इट्स एनालिसिस एंड इंटरप्रिटेशन कूड मेक अस अराइव एट अ प्रोविजनल डायग्नोसिस एंड विच इज ऑफन वेरी क्लोज टू द फाइनल डायग्नोसिस दिस इज द पावर ऑफ a detailed history taking and its analysis and this is the very purpose of history taking having said that if a provisional diagnosis made only on an analysis of history can make us close to the final diagnosis you can only fine tune it with further physical examination and if necessary investigations we need to look at it with little thoughtful aim and when we are talking about how to achieve it first let me elaborate on what does the diagnosis mean when i ask my students is tb a diagnosis most of them say yes patient is suffering from tb but in this diagnosis as tb we have not understood the site of disease the type of disease and also the functional ability of the affected organ besides just knowing probable etiology and hence the purpose of history taking is to arrive not only at a provisional diagnosis but a complete diagnosis what is complete diagnosis the complete diagnosis has four components an anatomical diagnosis a pathological diagnosis an etiological diagnosis and finally the functional diagnosis which means to assess the functional competence or integrity of the affected organ friends we need to go systematically in this very sequence to find out from the history where is the site of disease that anatomy what is the type of disease that is pathology what is the cause of disease that's etiology and what is the functional impairment of the affected organ all this is possible by a good critical analysis of history taking and this is the very purpose of history taking it's not a ritual of collecting information but much beyond that and i think make a point to arrive at this complete diagnosis only by the history and you will be amazed that most of the time it is possible only if we give a thought to it it ends up with an excellence and rationality now you wonder how do you know the anatomy of course the symptoms can drive you to anatomy but you can even get to the micro anatomy for example if you have a respiratory disease then you can assess with the history alone whether it's the airways the lung parenchyma pleura or interstitium only by the history and therefore history can reveal micro anatomy but if you go further for example if you have a renal disease then you not only know whether it is in the glomerulus tubules or a collecting system but if it is in the glomerulus you can also guess whether it is in the endothelium epithelium or the interstitium and if it's in the tubules you can even guess whether it is the proximal tubules or the distal tubules which means a good history can get down to the depth of histopathology histology and also the biochemical abnormalities only by the history that's the power of a good history taking and that's the very purpose of history taking what about pathology 
we did learn some terms in our second MBBS and we have to apply them even in day-to-day -day clinical practice. Is the type of disease inflammatory or degenerative or infiltrative or a tumor or a growth or an infarction or an atrophy or a hypertrophy? All such things can be made out simply by a good analysis of the history. And it's only when you know the anatomy and the pathology that you can then guess etiology. Etiology is guessed only by the using of adjectives like acute or chronic, persistent or recurrent, progressive, worsening or improving and so on and so forth. We will learn in the subsequent videos all such details but here I want to stress the purpose of history taking is to arrive at a provisional complete diagnosis and it is most often very close to the final diagnosis. Once we get this hang of doing it, once you develop the skill of doing it, then we recognize a pattern of the disease based on mere symptomatology and analysis of history. Once you have got through the recognition of a pattern, the pattern recognition is the first step, but that is not enough. We have to think beyond the pattern recognition. This is simply because each disease presents with a wide spectrum of symptomatology and that is based on a tripartite interaction between the host, that is the patient, the environment in which the patient lives and also the trigger that has set up a disease. For example, if your pattern recognition shows that a patient is likely to have a pneumonia, then you put these factors to that possible diagnosis and if you are dealing with a neonate or an infant or at any age an immunocompromised person, then this pneumonia may not present even with fever. This is important to get to the details of how the wide spectrum of presentation can fool you even after you have done through a pattern recognition. The host could also have a genetic susceptibility that can be found out by the family history or a genetic history. He could be partially immune because he has had a typhoid vaccine but that immunity is waning off. So his typhoid fever comes with a low grade fever and not the step ladder and pattern of high fever that we read in the text. This is where it's important. And then the environment. It's important in which environment he lies and the environment could decide what could be his presentation like in a hyperendemic malarial zone, friends, malaria presents without fever. Forget the fever with rigors. How important it is. And if somebody has traveled through the forest or jungles, he could have had a tick bite and the problems could arise from such tick infested vectors. And the trigger is equally important because the trigger, commonly an infection, could be aggressive, could be mild, could be drug resistant and could be bacterial, viral, parasitic, fungal, etc. Friends, therefore, the purpose of history taking is to arrive at a provisional diagnosis which is complete with all four components, the anatomy, pathology, etiology and functional element and that needs to be tied up with a wide variation and a tripartite interaction between a given host and the environment and the trigger. I hope my purpose of putting this topic on this video is served that you are sensitized now and think about it. You can nearly diagnose correctly only on the detailed history and that is the purpose of history taking. Thank you.